Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the Metastellar YouTube channel for the weekly free Friday, where we talk about the top 10 science fiction and fantasy books on Amazon. Today's number one best-selling free speculative fiction book is got a journalist who can't use any of her electronics because of an EMP blast. And that that hits kind of home to me. That sounds pretty scary. But before we get into that, we have nine other books to get through on today's top 10 list. And joining me today is Rommel Madre. Thank you so much for coming. I was worried that like everybody else on the Metastellar team, you were off celebrating the holidays. But I'm glad that you put our readers first. <laughs> so okay. thanks, thanks for coming. Oh, um, thank you for having me. Yes, every single Friday, the team here at Metastellar reads the first few chapters of every sci-fi and fantasy books on Amazon's top 10 free list. Um, and today we were joined by Metastellar editors Alex Korolov and Carla Nordlund, and also um, uh, community members Rommel and Christina Brown. So thanks, guys, for helping out with the reviews. That's a lot of books to get through. Even if we don't read the whole book, still, that's a lot of books to read and review. I appreciate it very much. For those who are new to our channel, Metastellar is an online magazine of speculative fiction. All the content is always free to our readers. We publish original short fiction, reprints, excerpts, essays, and lots and lots of book reviews, like this article here, which is linked down below. We are able to do this and keep our content completely free thanks to our Patreon supporters. We love you guys. And we also published our first anthology this summer, uh, the best of year one. And we're starting to work on our second annual anthology. So if you want to get into this anthology, um, a fall submission cycle is closed for original fiction, but we're always accepting reprints and our spring submission cycle will be in March. So Thanks for joining us, and let's get started with book number 10. And let me zoom in so you can see it a little bit closer. And here it is. There's uh, the book cover, so you can look at it. And the book is called, oh, I'm having trouble reading it, uh, Pack of Secrets by Mara May. The first of two, the, the first of two books in the Celestial Artifacts urban fantasy romance series. The sequel is currently available for pre-order, will be coming out next week, and the series is in Kindle Unlimited. And our community member, Christina Brown, um, read the beginning of this book. And so the main character, Grace, is a member of a shape-shifting wolf pack, and she's been nothing but a disappointment to her father, who's also the pack leader, because she can't shift. But she's still a good fighter, she could take out most of the wolves without even having to shift into wolf form. Um, so, but her entire pack, including her dad, hates her for this. Despite that, she sticks with the pack, respects her dad, does what they tell her to do, including going on a heist to steal an artifact. And if she fails, the pack will dismember her. Like, oh my God, talk about a horrible, unsupportive family. I do not want to be in her shoes. So what happens during the heist is the alarms go off and Grace runs away, but she's attacked. And she's attacked by a sexy guy in sweatpants who tries to kill her. But she's able to reach into the depths of his soul and release all his repressed anger and grief all at once, incapacitating him. This opens him up to attack, but instead she heals him and flees. So, a little confusing there. Um, so, Christina says that there's action, uh, a plenty, and things move along at a decent pace. But there's a lot of internalization of whether or not her father will kill her and how sexy her attempted murderer is. Which, which kind of makes the book drag a little bit in spots. Still, she, Christina says that this is an interesting story and Grace is likable and fierce. It, it, she also finds it hard to understand why she's still sticking with a pack that wants her dead. 
but she says she's intrigued with what's happening and the magic is cool and she might keep reading. Uh, next we have The Shadows of Wonderland by Isadora Brown. And it's the first uh, three of six books in the Shadows of Wonderland paranormal romance series. So this is a box set. And the other books are $5 each and they're not in Kindle Unlimited. And Rommel, you read this one. Uh, what did you think of this book? Firstly, this is not my genre, but I, <laughs> but it's growing on me. It's growing <laughs> on me. It, it, it's like I'm learning to appreciate different uh, things from the authors. Anyway. The book is an urban fantasy romance series filled with mystery, magic, and forbidden love. It, it calls itself similar to Once Upon a Time of the Veronica Mars book series, both of which I have not read. Oh, but... Once I, I Once Upon a Time is it was a TV show that I okay. loved. It's fairy tale characters coming oh, yeah, remember, into the real world and also in the fairyland. And I love Veronica Mars. So these are like my two favorite things. So okay. I'm already look. I'm I'm actually I want to check out this book this weekend. I remember seeing Once Upon a Time. It was okay for a couple of seasons, but for me it was like okay. After. Yeah, it started to drag a little bit. Yeah, it started to drag a little. Anyway, I read the first two chapters of the Seeker's Seeker's Shadow, which is the first book in the series. Um, and here we meet Alice. Alice, yeah, she's an <laughs> unmagic person. And she works as the daughter daughter of the Wonderland Chief of Police. No, what, what do you call it? I, I forgot the name of it when you just hire family for the work. But anyway. Nepotism. Uh, nepotism. No nepotism. <laughs> you know, everything's good in this small town. You know, you pass your exams, you get, you get a job. Anyway, she works in, apparently she works in records. But she feels that she, she, she should actually be a cop. That's why she's poking her nose into the death of her friend called Anna Skarsgård. I'm not sure if that is any relation to the guy that was in Godzilla, um, who played the vampire in something or another. I can't remember. Alexander Skarsgård or something. But anyway, <laughs> she's, she's poking her nose around the death of her friend Anna. So, um, there's, and then come to visit then Rumpelstiltskin, who is... Um, I, I call him Rump, right? Who's a magical Englishman. Yeah, yes, yes. Uh, you uh, did uh, call him Rump, but I have the benefits of cut and paste, and I fixed that in your review. Okay. <laughs> uh, let's call him... Okay, we'll call him Rumps. <laughs> anyway, he's our brooding Englishman, bad boy, a la magic user, a la historical whatever figure. And who Alice has clearly got the hots for... As she's scoping him out from head to toe, literally. As she as she as she goes through the death of a friend, she's literally like, okay, yeah, yeah. He's clearly he's clearly chiseled. Okay. And he's not short, apparently, because not an imp. So he's a six foot imp. Anyway. Um, they discuss Anna's death in the police station, in the hallway. And it, you know, it kind of reminds me a bit of Rocky IV where Apollo died and Rocky traveled to Siberia and then everybody forgot about Apollo being dead. But anyway, um, it was okay. I mean, you know, he's he's clearly got a horse, and, a horse in the race and an agenda here. And there's a body floating around called the Mad Mage. There's the big queen called Red, the Red Queen who banished him. And I'm guessing everything will be revealed at a later time. Um, after her impromptu date with Rumpelstiltskin, she goes, she gets a bit of fatherly advice from her dad who tells her, keep away from that bad boy. He's not good for you. And, you know, dad's like, okay. And she's thinking to herself, nah, nah, I'm going to go for it. I'm going to go for it. Clearly, Alice is in Wonderland. Um, as she doesn't realize that some people are jail bait. Or jail trouble. Anyway, the pacing of this book was good. It was well written, fun to read for those who like the genre. As a procedure, procedural, I would give it as a part of my local culture, eight of a, out of ten tomaracks, which is for anyone reading this review, a local fruit to the tropic, which is delicious. 
Okay. Anyway. <laughs> and it has no relevance to this review at all. <laughs> yeah, I took that out of the of the printed story because I didn't know what that was. I mean, I, I'm just adding in random tangents here. <laughs> like, hey, you know, hey. All right. Next, we have The Detective Dragon by Alice Summer. The first of five books in the Lone Dragon's Paranormal Romance series. The other books are $3 each, but they're all in Kindle Unlimited. For those who don't know, Kindle Unlimited is where you pay 10 bucks a month and you read all the books you want. It's a great deal. It's like a Netflix for books. For people who read a lot, it's excellent. And a lot of bestsellers are in Kindle Unlimited, including all the Harry Potter books. Uh, a lot of independent authors and major publishers all have their books in Kindle Unlimited. I love it, and I recommend it to anyone who reads a lot. So, Ramil, you read uh, the beginning of this book as well. What did you think of it? Uh, it was, it was a, I mean, it's a bit of a procedural. I enjoyed it. Uh, there's our star character who is uh, our chief protagonist, who is Anna. Anna's having a bit of a crappy day. Uh, she got fired. She went on a bad date. Uh, he, he dropped her off on the side of the road in the middle of nowhere. Rain starts to fall. It sounds like an old country song. I mean, I hope her dog isn't dead at home. But, you know, whatever. That's chapter one. Chapter two, we meet uh, Gryffindor for Griffin or some Grissom or something is his name. I can't remember. And nor do I really care. Um, but he's a brooding dragon-esque shapeshifter cop-esque who works out a lot, apparently, to get rid of his inner rage. Maybe the Hulk should have tried his, his diet. But anyway, so he's a cop. He's investigating a kidnapping that happened. He's angry at something. And apparently, he's a shapeshifting dragon, as I said again, who can influence the weather, which is why. I think meteorologists are all wrong. We need to find these dragons, hunt them down, and shoot them. Because these <laughs> creatures cause untold damage to life and property. <laughs> so <laughs> all over the world, there are these things scoping about. In Thailand, they would have done this damage, and no one knows about it. So anyway, <laughs> we got these lizards here. And apparently, this particular lizard um, can change the weather and stuff. He, he drives in his pickup truck or his SUV. He sees Anna on the road. Clearly, as he as they say in the book, her body is slamming. She has all the curves in the right places. And he's fallen in love with her, as Michael Corleone says, a la Thunderbolt. She comes into his car, a complete stranger. <laughs> but has no one ever watched a horror movie? But apparently no one has. And that's how chapter two ends. It's it's a good it's it's well written. It's a good procedural. It's a bit, you know, you can figure out what's going to happen uh, in the state. You know, there's going to be a budding romance. Um, you know, it might have been a prelude to, you know, how I, I it could have been called "How I Met Your Mother" by Daenerys Tar Targaryen. You know, it's kind of like that. Yeah. But I give it I give it eight out of ten for a fruit that I haven't that people should know about eight out of ten mangoes. People <laughs> should know what a mango is. So it's eight out of ten mangoes. Okay. Right? <laughs> All right. Next we have the Humanity series by Seth Rain which is a box set of all five books in the series, and it's dystopian sci-fi. Uh, normally they're a dollar to four dollars each. I am not a fan of dystopian science fiction. I have read and liked the occasional book here and there, so wow. I'm giving it a shot. Uh, yeah, I figure real life is depressing enough without <laughs> spending my leisure reading, you know, in a depressing future. So the book starts out with our protagonist, Scott, as he's looking down on his hand. There's a tattoo on his palm. And it, the tattoo has his day of death written on it. And it's today's date. It's 14 minutes until midnight. So it sounds like, it, it really sounds like he thinks he's going to die. He's looking out the window 
and there's a watcher looking at him standing in a rain under a street lamp outside uh, his apartment building. Uh, and then one of his neighbors bangs on his apartment door. She's begging for her help. Uh, someone's on a roof about to jump off. And he goes up to the roof and reluctantly, he doesn't quite want to leave his apartment, but um, she convinces him. She go He goes up there. And one of his neighbors, Jason, is there standing on the edge of the roof about to jump. And the watcher from outside, he's now here on this roof as well. And it's going to be Jason's death day tomorrow. So he's freaking out. Um, he's Jason is known he was going to die in this day since he was 10. And the way this works, it, the, the author now tells us, is that you know the day you're going to die, but not the year. So every year when that date comes around, you know, you're going to start freaking out. And it's too much for Jason, and he throws himself off the roof. So Scott's pretty relieved that it's not him that the Watcher is there for. The Watcher is there for Jason. Then the Watcher tells him that, no, actually, he's there to watch Scott die. But the date on Scott's hand might be wrong. For the first time ever, the date could be wrong. It's being contested. And now we find out what's going on. It seems that 144,000 people have been chosen as part of the second coming in the rapture. And as part of this process, they get the day of their death tattooed on their hands. But the date is chosen by an AI, not by some magical force. And if the AI is wrong about Scott's date, then it might be wrong about everything. So it's a very interesting premise, and the book is very readable, but it's a little grim for me, and given today's news out there, you know, environment, Twitter falling apart, you know, all that, all the things, it, I, I, am, I don't want to read something that's going to make me even sadder, so I'm going to skip this one. Um, then... Um, Let's go on to the next book on the list, One If By Land by Martha Carr and Michael Anderley, which I am looking forward to. Uh, I didn't read this one. Uh, one of our community members, Carla Nordland, uh, read us. So this is the first of six books in the Chronicles of Woodland Underwood, a military fantasy kind of series. The other books are $5 each, but they're all in Kindle Unlimited. And Martha Carr and Michael Anderley have been on this list before. A lot. So um, I looked up this book to see where it fits in with their other books. And it's part of the Orisaran universe. And this Orisaran universe has two dozen other book series in it. Oh. And some of the plot threads in this particular book, this particular book here, call back to those other books. So if you like these authors and you like the premise, you might want to start from the beginning. Um, and I posted a link to the suggested Arisaran universe reading list uh, order below. And so the first uh, series in this universe is the Ly Lyric Chronicles, which is also in Kindle Unlimited. So Michael Anderley is hugely prolific. He works with a lot of authors. He's putting, he seems to be putting out hundreds of books a year. So there, this is a, a book writing factory. And the books have a very engaging, light, engrossing style. So I've read several of um, the series by Martha Carr and Michael Enderley, or by Michael Enderley and other co-authors. And they all have a similar style to them. So if you like that style, you're, you're in luck. Um, and they're popcorn books. I mean, you re you can just read them up like a dozen at a time. And I have done that in the past as well. So um, I am looking forward to checking this out. But anyway, so Carla says that um, the book um, is about uh, Winland Underwood, who's a light elf and a witch. And she's led a band of magical refugees deep into the Ozarks two months ago. And she's still paranoid. She only trusts herself to watch the perimeter. 
of their new home, which is a turn of century abandoned ghost town. And then at the edge of the woods, she detects a shimmer of old magic, but I can't pinpoint where or what it may be. She goes back into the town and uh, again feels traces of old magic. And then she discovers symbols of dark magic in a building's corner, although they're slightly altered. But she convinces herself that she can handle any trouble that comes along the way. She doesn't have to call her father. Her father is someone called The Fixer, which I assume is a character from one of the previous series. Meanwhile, uh, 10 miles east, we have a wizard, Belmont, who also feels that something is wrong. He's got a dog, Minnie, and he heads towards a cabin owned by his friend. They run into some invisible wards, and then they find his friend murdered uh, and burned. All that's left is a charred skeleton. And Belmont pulls a ring off his friend's hand and feels a shudder of dark magic. He and Minnie race for the door, barely getting outside in time for him to seal the cabin shut. So, a lot of action here. Carl, um, and Carla says this isn't her, um, the usual kind of book she goes for, but she's intrigued. And the stakes are laid down right away, but there's plenty of mystery and questions, and she wants to keep reading. She also loves a good dog companion, and Minnie gets a 10 out of 10 in her book. So everybody's giving 10 out of, or some out of 10 scores today, except for me. I feel left out. But moving on, number five, Dead Blood by Jay Bauer. The first of three books in the Dead Blood dystopian science fiction series. The other books in the series are $1 to $3 each, but the entire series is in Kindle Unlimited. So I read this one, and again, I am not the target audience for this book because it's a dystopian fiction book. Plus, it's a zombie apocalypse book, and I'm also not a fan of zombies. I'm a little scared of scary books and scary movies and scary video games, also roller coasters. Um, so basically, if it can't do me any actual harm, I'm scared of it. But in real life, I'm totally fine with anything. Anyway, so the story features Dorian Wilde, who awakened two months ago, whatever that is. And now he's driven mad by the scent of blood. Mad with lust for blood. But he's not all bad. He lets someone go if they have children. Sometimes he'll even protect them from zombies. Because there are zombies out there, and he is not a zombie. He's something else. I'm guessing a vampire, but uh, in the beginning section that I read, it doesn't quite explain it yet. So the book starts out with Dorian stalking a man to where he's hiding out, and the man is hiding in a senior citizen center. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, there's brainless, undead zombie zombies shambling around, and they attack Dorian. He gets bitten by the neck, and um, the man he was hunting hears all this commotion and escapes. Then in the next chapter, he finds a living woman and lures her back to his lair by pretending to be human and promising that she'll be safe. And he is super creepy. And he doesn't eat, but he's got plenty of canned goods stocked away in this house that, that he's taken over. To, so that she has something to stack on. So it makes her feel safe and comforting. I am creeped out by this guy. Um, I don't like spending time in his head. I don't like how he manipulates women. It is so so creepy. I'm not going to keep reading. But if you like creepy stories, it's free. Next, we have The Solid State Shuffle by Jeffrey Ballard. The first of five books in the Sunken City Capers, a mystery science fiction series. The other books are $1 to $4 each, and they are not in Kindle Unlimited. So I read the beginning of this book, and I loved it. So it's set about 100 years in the future, after a major earthquake has taken out most of the West Coast, and now, like, all of old Seattle is underwater. Issa, our protagonist, is a thief, and the book starts out with her, her boyfriend, and her gay best friend on a mission. They are, they're stealing some money from that's stored in a vault deep underwater in what used to be Seattle um, in an old bank building. So it's really cool. 
Uh, the pasting is great. I love the banter between the characters and the premise. This book reminds me of J.D. Robb's In Depth In Death series, uh, which if you haven't checked out, it's a it's a near future uh, sci fi procedural uh, about a cop and uh, her husband. Uh, except it, except in the book The Solid State Shuffle, of course the protagonists are criminals and not cops. So, um, uh, so these particular criminals usually don't like to do jobs close to home, but they made an exception this time because they need the money. They've just bought a set of very expensive identity chips, and they love being able to pass for regular law-abiding citizens and do normal things. But now they're on the radar of another local gang, and things are getting tense. I really enjoy the story so far. I had a hard time putting it down, so I can go on and finish up the article. I'll definitely be coming back and finishing it this weekend. Uh, I won't know if I like it enough to pay for the other books in the series, but it's looking promising so far. Next, we have The Stone of Knowing by Alan Packer, the first of six books in the Stone Cycle, a coming-of-age fantasy series. The other books are $1 to $3 each, and the sixth book is currently available for pre-order, will be coming out in December. And the series is not in Kindle Unlimited. So this is a very classic style epic fantasy with kings and wizards. And the protagonist is Thomas, a stable hand. So this reminds me a little bit of the Chronicles of Perdain uh, or one of those other classic uh, epic fantasy series, which I enjoyed, but I'm having a hard time getting into this book. So the writing style felt old-fashioned to me, which is probably why it reminded me of the Chronicles of Perdane. Um, and because of, of, of the slightly old-fashioned writing, there was a sense of distance between me and the main character, and it was kind of hard to get into the book. So the book starts out with a prologue where an unnamed king and his unnamed commander are plotting to destroy a village in Arvanon. So so the Arvanon is a separate kingdom from theirs. Um, and they're kind of invading it. And the commander is looking for a prize beyond price. And he's going to leave nothing alive in his quest to find it. And then we switch to Thomas, who lives in the kingdom of Arvanon. And he's a stable hand and works for the king of the country. He wants to have a dog of his own, but his father refuses to let him have one because they have enough to do taking care of the king's hounds. Um, but as he's walking uh, home one day, um, he he finds a stone and picks it up and puts it in his pocket. And then he comes across an underfed dog in the road. But as he's looking at the dog, he touches the stone and he sees that the dog is actually a savage wolf, gets scared and runs away. Then um, uh, he, he runs towards the local farmste farms farmstead and a farmer comes out um, and kills the dog. And it turns out that it wasn't uh, a dog. It wasn't a wolf. It was just a dog, but it was, it was rabbit. And the farmer is really impressed that Thomas was able to spot the fact that it had rabies and alert everybody. And... So that kind of creeps Thomas out because he really thought that this was a wolf. Then that night, he dreams of wild and menacing creatures and also of a young woman with wild and fury eyes. So it's a slow beginning, a little too slow for me. And like I said, the main character in the storytelling doesn't really pull me in um, because of the writing style. But if you like this writing style, then check it out. Uh, it does have the feel of an old-fashioned classic um, epic fantasy. Next, we have Laird Wolf by Vivian Arendt, the eighth of 14 books in the Northern Lights Shifters, a paranormal romance series. The other books are $3 each and are not in Kindle Unlimited, but the first book is also free today. And we've we reviewed the first two books um, a year ago, and I'll have a link, uh, a link to that in the article, uh, and I'll add that below as well. 
So I read the beginning of this book and I'm not a fan of paranormal romance. And I'm especially not a fan of books with naked male chests on the cover. As you can see there, that's the naked guy. But I know a lot of people like these books and this author has been in the New York Times bestseller list. So I'm going to keep an open mind. Plus, sometimes the books surprise me and I wind up reading them despite my initial reservations. So the book starts out with Damon. He's driving a motorcycle down a highway in Scotland. He just flew in from New York City on a red eye. It's June. It's raining. It's kind of chilly. His teeth are chattering, but he's going to push on because he's a shapeshifter and that keeps him from getting hypothermia. He's on a rescue mission to save a woman named Addie the best friend of his best friend's wife. And I'm assuming that his best friend got together with his wife in a previous book in this series. Then his back tire blows up and lands him waist deep in a sludge bottomed fish pond, just as he pulls up to his destination, uh, a giant old creepy house. So uh, he's bare chested, bringing the water out of his shirt when Addie comes out of the house to meet him and he's immediately attracted to her. And even though they've never met before, as soon as she sees him, she throws him herself into his arms. And uh, meanwhile, the two guys who own the house are standing there, you know, looking at them and have no idea what's going on. And they don't like seeing him there. Then we switch to Addie's point of view. And she's been waiting for her best friend to send someone and to rescue her. And uh, so there's a reason why she kissed um, Damon. And that's because she's got a magical power that requires close physical contact. And then she introduces Damon to the owners of the house, the two brothers that she works for. And she says that Damon is her boyfriend. And she's lying. They've never met before. And then she takes him up to her room. And he strips so he can wash and change. And she gets to see him naked. Because, of course, she does. This is that kind of book. And then we switch to Damon's point of view after he's showered and dressed. And we finally find out what's going on. So Addie is cataloging the contents of the house. The owner died. um, And now the courts are going to decide which of the two brothers is going to inherit it. And everyone's a shapeshifter. So Addie's also a wolf shapeshifter. And the two brothers who are giving her the creeps they're tiger shapeshifters. And I like the banter here and the premise and the sexual tension. So I might keep reading. Yeah, I'm kind of surprised as well. Finally, we have The Hartford Homestead by Marie Wilkins, a standalone book of EMP survival. So uh, Marie Wilkins has been on this list before. So my brother Alex uh, read this book. And he reads all these EMP books because he's into EMP survival. And EMP is an electromagnetic pulse. And it's a kind of attack that could be called, it could be caused by nuclear blast or could be caused by solar flare. And what it does is it kills all the electron, all the electronics, but leaves um, living things completely untouched. I mean, you don't even feel it. So, um, and so uh, here, uh, the main character is Tasha Devers, a journalist who works in New York City, mm. but she misses the quiet rural life she had back in Kentucky. She's getting ready to do an interview with some famous rich guy. It's supposed to be a really important interview, but the guy is running late. And um, after half an hour, or she... she uh, goes outside to see what's going on and notices that everyone is running around freaking out. So Alex says he likes the fact that she didn't notice that an EMP blast had happened. In a lot of EMP books, the main character instantly knows that it was an EMP blast and also happens to be some kind of super prepper who knows exactly what they have to do to survive and then pulls out all their guns and kills everyone before before they kill him. I, most of these books are super creepy. I've read a bunch of them. There's often a lot of them on these top 10 lists. It's a super popular genre right now. But Alex says this one starts differently. And it was a nice beginning. And it was interesting enough that he wants to keep reading it. 
Um, and the links to all these books are going to be in the description box below. If you like this kind of content, we do this show every single Friday afternoon. So you have some great free reading for the weekend. And um, if you want to support our channel, please like, comment, uh, subscribe, and uh, support us on Patreon. Um, these guys are awesome. We love you. And uh, Metastellar wouldn't be what it is without you. We really appreciate it. And pick up a copy of the book. I will see you all next week. And Rommel, thanks again for joining me today. I really appreciate you helping out because it can be can get a little lonely here by myself. Um, if anybody else wants to join us or be part of the Metastellar community, just email me. We're always looking for writers, reviewers, and talk show hosts or co-hosts. So uh, look us up. Um, we're a friendly bunch. See y'all next week. Bye-bye.